His Excellency, the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantami, FNCS, FBCS, FIIM, Directors of Federal and State Government Agencies that accompany the Honorable Minister here present, the Vice Chancellor of Fountain University and other visiting Vice Chancellors, spiritual leaders here present, the National Executive of NOSFAT here present, Dean of Colleges, Head of Departments, and other Galaxy of Intellectuals here present, Royal Fathers, very distinguished invited guests, friends and well wishers of the University here present, and those joining us virtually, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tawhid Alim. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor of Fountain University, Professor Amidu Olali Kosani, I want to welcome you to this program. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be upon you. Digital economy, digital youth, and the imperatives of a sustainable development for the 21st century. The topic, if you look at it carefully, it has four components. Component number one is digital economy. Component number two is digital youth. Component number three, sustainable development and component number four, 21st century. These are the four components of uh, the topic. There are two components of uh, digital economy which I want to speak more on. Number one is digital innovation, and number two is digital entrepreneurship. These are the two prerequisites to developing an indigenous digital economy. Any country that fails to address digital innovation or digital entrepreneurship can hardly achieve meaningful result when it comes to its digital economy. There must be digital innovation. Digital innovation is all about the deployment of digital technologies. The deployment of digital technologies to solve problems using some creativities. You identify a challenge in a community, you deploy digital technologies, and you make an attempt to solve it through coming up with innovative ideas. That is what digital innovation is all about. And this is the approach that many countries adopt today, and they are yielding a very positive result when it comes to revenue generation, economic development, security, education, health, agriculture, and many more. Digital youth can accommodate all young people that can be able to manipulate ICT gadgets, either basic, intermediate, or advanced. They fall under the category of digital youth. But our major challenge today, we utilize technology for socialization instead of for economic development or any positive gain. So we are blessed with a digital youth, but we fail to make a paradigm shift where our youth deploy technology for economic development, either collectively or individually. We fail to utilize technology effectively for education because there are so many online platforms where you will be educated for free there are world-class content online from Harvard, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Oxford, Cambridge, and many more. Some of the contents online, you can hardly find them for free anywhere in the world. Some of them you need to pay thousands of dollars to travel to go and acquire. But yet, our youth spend their time online, socialization, attacking one another, insulting one another, causing disunity in the country. And the worst part of it sometimes, this young population cannot even be able to buy broadband for browsing. They rely on their mothers and their fathers to support them to buy broadband. When they get free Wi-Fi or limited, then the whole community is in trouble. Less than 10% will go online in order to make research or to partake in any certification or to acquire any skill that is required in the fourth industrial revolution. So when it comes to digital youth, 
There is no doubt we are blessed with digital youth, but we fail to make a paradigm shift where our youth will make use of technology and the expertise they acquire for economic development to partake in critical thinking or analytical thinking to identify complex problems locally or internationally and come up with a solution to it. Still, we remain consumers in Africa when it comes to technology. Only few are making us proud. There is no sustainable development without making use of technology positively. It cannot be attained. When we say technology, it doesn't mean just for you to spend your time online replying WhatsApp messages or chatting or debating on Facebook or tweeting on Twitter, arguing, insulting, being insulted. This is not what it means with sustainable development. The sustainable development is to dedicate significant part of your time to critical thinking, analytical thinking, creativity, complex problem solving, and many more. When you do that, one single person that will be able to come up with an innovative idea and implement it will create a job of 10,000 Nigerians. And this is what digital innovation is all about. You can change the life of 1,000 Nigerians, 10,000 Nigerians, 50,000 Nigerians can be employed by you. And the major challenge we are having in Nigeria and in Africa is the fact that our population growth is higher than our economic growth. If your population growth is higher than your economic growth, then by implication, the poverty level will be getting more severe and more worrisome. What is supposed to be attained is to make sure your annual economic growth is higher than your population growth. So by implication, if you attend that, the population will continue to increase while they will become more comfortable. But if the population growth is higher than the economic growth, by implication, that population will continue to remain in poverty and the poverty will become, continue to become more severe. And this is our challenge in Nigeria as a country and our challenge in Africa as a continent. Why? Because it doesn't depend that government should come and tell you do this or do this. Try to come up with an innovative ideas. There are so many institutions of government that are willing to help. Some they provide scholarship. Some they have tax incentive. Some are willing to provide the enabling environment you need. But if you fail to start it, nobody will come and tell you, please wake up and do it. Nobody will say, stand up and do it. It is your responsibility to kick start so that you will be motivated. And this is indeed very important. The opportunities are there. Particularly in Nigeria, we have, I have no doubt, we have the talent. Secondly, we have many opportunities. These opportunities could not be locally, could be globally, because today, when you are addressing the issue of opportunities, don't look at that locally, look at it globally. So we have, but the problem, the talent fails to identify the opportunities globally and utilize them. So there is a mismatch between the priority of our talent and the opportunities available. And secondly, our system of education also should focus more on promoting innovation and entrepreneurship. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are presenting to the Honorable Minister now uh, the award of honor presented to Professor Issa Ali Ibrahim, Sheikh Kantami, guest lecturer, the first African guest lecturer at Distinguished Lecture Series of University 2022 edition by from Fountain University. Thank you very much. This one just brought him by DHL this morning from UK. Also for the minister. Certificate of appointment as uh, Professor Issa Ali Bright Pantami, FNSC, as Grand Ambassador 
Fountain University. Wednesday, December 7, tomorrow hour 14. And you know what an ambassador does? Eh? Our own ambassador has been going around to tell the truth, and you can see the way he presented his lecture without any script. So he's going to take Fountain University to the next level, inshallah. This is for him as well. One more. All right, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we can all download the copy of the lecture delivered by the Honorable Minister via this link. Please, let's pen down this link to download the copy of the lecture. B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash L-Series 2.